Welcome to video two, B and E, A to Z. This video is designed for professionals, cops, locksmiths, security personnel that need to know how to do quick entry, sometimes covert entry. We don't limit the sale of this video, so we ask that you pay attention to laws and your own morality. As a friend of mine said, that's why they make windows to keep burglars out. Well, we're not aiming towards burglars. We're aiming towards people that need to know the most efficient way to get in any building. And that's what this tape is all about. During this tape, we're going to look at modern updates to tried and true methods of entry and lock picking. We'll see what technology has brought to the field. Everything from new lock picks that will pick high security locks to electronic means of opening most buildings. We'll also look at some of the techniques that are still good after 10 years. In fact, we'll look at some old clips, primarily from the original B and E A to Z. You'll also get to see what 10 years has done to my hair color. There are four different elements, no matter whether you're an intelligence agent, SWAT team, or a locksmith, you need to consider. One of the fast approaches that's becoming more popular every day is to simply take a few blocks of C4 plastic explosive, a good detonator, set it up by the door or building you need entry to, and then vacate the premises. However, we'd like to look at a little more practical approach that doesn't do quite as much damage. Police, we have a warrant. Open up. Police, we have a warrant. Open up. This next technique is very unusual and employs a couple of tools that are cheap and very efficient. Here we have a typical fairly heavy wooden deadlocked deadbolted door. Difficult to open. Of course we can pick the lock, we can chop through the door. number of ways to get inside. One of the things we want to accomplish in this is to start thinking of ways to go through. In other words, to circumvent the lock. We don't have to unlock this door to get in if it's done right. All we have to do is go through this obstacle. One of the ways to do that, a number of years ago, people came up with the idea of taking a car jack, usually a hydraulic jack, for instance. You can tell that this exerts quite a bit of pressure. It'll lift up an American car. If you can take the jack, put it in between the jams, it's theoretically possible to move this massive wooden jam with enough pressure over far enough to let the latch, even in this case an inch, inch and a half deadbolt, come out of the door. Now obviously Jack isn't going to make it all the way over. So the way people did this was took blocks of wood, propped the Jack up, tried to extend it out as far as they could, put other blocks of wood in front of the Jack to press against the jam. From personal experience I can tell you this is really rough. A lot of Jacks don't work upside down. The wood will bend, the wood will pop loose. It's a very cumbersome, inefficient operation. A screw jack is sometimes a little bit easier. The trick is to do is to get as close to the jam as you possibly can if you're going to use one of these. Well, a couple years ago, somebody took this concept and thought, you know, I can do a better job. And as such, we have a tool known as the jam spreader. This is manufactured by Omni Concepts in Vista, California. It's also sold by Shomer Tech, a number of other people. Same principle, it's a hydraulic jack. Easy to extend the legs all that distance, get it in tight on the jam. Got a handle, folds up, store hydraulics on and off. This will put out about 4,000 pounds of pressure in order to spread the jam. That is enough to spread most jams without too much damage. Will not spread heavy metal jams in large buildings. We've got the jam spreader in place. It's horizontal, the correct side is up, tightened down. We're as close to the jam as we can be comfortably. We're going to apply pressure. You're going to hear the jam creak as it starts to spread open. It's so moving the jam away from the door. You can hear that noise. Pulling the deadbolt. 
out of the door. Now this is not a huge deadbolt, but it's reasonably sized. I'm going to apply this pressure. I can feel the door starting to go right now. It's creaking, giving way. That has probably just popped deadbolt loose out of the door. These are an example of state-of-the-art opening tools. They're designed for emergency opening situations. They work well for that. They also work well for normal opening situations. These two tools are very similar in nature. They're hydraulic openers. This one is called the Hydroforce and is made by Iowa American. This one is called the Rabbit Tool and it's made by the same people that make the Jaws of Life. The way these work, apply hydraulic pressure by pumping, forces the door back and open. In about 20 to 30 seconds, these tools will literally rip open most doors. This is an aluminum frame door, sturdy. We've got our rabbit tool. Now we don't have a jam to put it against, so we cannot open it traditional way. What we're gonna do is use the tool as if it's a jam spreader. We're gonna put it in here and see if we can force the jam apart and pop the uh, two deadbolts here. Let's see what happens. It does force it uh, very easily. Takes it right out of the frame. Now, of course, this door opens inward, so we're gonna pry it to open and see. And there we go, the door's open. So it can be used on a door even without a jam, using it like a jam spreader. Force the frame away and you can see the length of this bolt, how effectively it forces it. Even though our door is not in a wall, not reinforced, principle still applies. It bends the metal, forces the door out. Even padlocks have a SWAT opening technique. This is a typical laminated master type padlock. These are getting harder and harder to open, more and more resistant to opening. Shackles are getting hardened. You can spend an hour hacksawing away on a hardened shackle and not uh, get through. They're getting bolt cutter resistant, although this one probably still could be open with bolt cutters. What do you do when you run into this situation? Well, you can try and pick it, although that's getting tougher too. Or we found a tool that we like made particularly for this application. This is called a duck bill for obvious reasons. Heavy duty wedge. Lots of mass. Now what this does, it doesn't knock the lock off the chain. Rather, place this in the shackle area. Then you strike the back side of it with a sledgehammer. In theory, this wedges it in deeper, causing an unnatural pulling pressure against the shackle should force the shackle out of the lock. We'll give it a shot here and see if it works. Two shots. And as you can see, quite clearly, Pop the shackle, it didn't pop the uh, side that should be opened. The weak side on this lock was the other side of the shackle, but it doesn't make any difference to us. Opened the lock quite successfully. This is a Master 2001, one of the best padlocks on the market. Case hardened steel shackle, almost impossible to hacksaw, is impossible to cut with bolt cutters. Two ball bearings on either side of the shackle hold it in the uh, case itself. Very difficult to get open, impossible to shim. We're gonna try the duckbill attack on this. That's gonna take two of us because it's a bit harder lock to do. But we'll try the duckbill and see if we have any luck with that. Frankly, I think it's going to end up being a testimonial to master locks because this is such a good lock, but we'll give it a shot. I'm just kind of hold that. Hopefully I'll hit it this time. Are we, see, we shouldn't be wedged in there, so that's the problem. Do it. Uh, open it. And there, in two strokes, two strokes, because I went an extra one, and it did it. Look at this. Look at this. Two strokes opened one of the toughest locks available. Smart opens use more time, but have no need for concealment, and less damage is allowed. For instance, the art of slipping non-deadbolt locks still works as well as it did 10 years ago. First thing we're going to look at here is spring-type plungers. Now this is a common door lock used on most doors where the uh, bolt is not a deadbolt, but rather is held in place by spring pressure. In other words, you can push it back by pushing against the spring. So when I shut the door, the bolt will retract and be held in place. This locks the door. This is a lock, normally is a key and knob lock, 
locks from the inside. This is common on houses, apartment buildings, hotels, etc. This is the infamous lock we see in all the James Bond movies where somebody gets a credit card and opens the door to the CIA safe house. That is possible. Way to tell if it's possible is to look at the door and see which way it opens and shuts. The bevel on the bolt will face opposite the way the door opens in normal doors. In other words, I have a flat side facing me and a beveled side facing the inside or safe part of this locked compartment. If I am trying to get entry from this side, it is possible to take a credit card, slip it between the door frame and the bevel part of the bolt, pushing the bevel back and opening the door. A better system is to use a putty knife. Even a kitchen knife will work, but a putty knife is flat, broad, very thin, and will go between the door frame and the bevel quite easily, forcing the bevel, do its natural angle, back. This is all well and good, except for the fact that we're trying to enter from the outside, which is a normal situation with these kind of locks. So instead of a bevel, I'm placing a locked, flat portion of the bolt. Let's take a look at a couple ways that this can be defeated. First of all, I'm going to lock the door. And if we don't get in, this is it. So, and we'll take a look at the bolt and see how to defeat this. These are two examples of linoleum cutting knives or scoring knives. They're extremely sharp, which is evidenced by this cut you'll notice in my knuckle. When I was practicing this move, because of the shape of the knives, they can be used to push or pull, depending on their curvature, a spring-loaded bolt. Now, in this instance, since we've ascertained the door opens outward, the flat part is facing us, we know we have to retract the bolt this way. I'm going to choose the knife with the more radical circle cut. I could use this knife to push if it was a flat, or rather a beveled bolt. I'm going to reach inside between the door jamb and the door itself, grabbing the bolt with this knife, retracting the knife towards me, and trying to force the spring bolt. That's how long it takes to open this type of door, which is still locked, you'll notice. All I did was slip the bolt. You can see scratch marks on the bolt itself if you're investigating this type of thing. Look for scratch marks across the top of the bolt and down the face of the bolt made by this knife as it retracts the spring into the door, opening the door. It leaves the door locked, but it does allow bypass entry without picking. There's one other way to defeat these locks that I find quite expedient. Let's lock it again, shut the door. Now I'm going to get, this is an ice pick or an awl. It's fairly sharp, fairly sturdy. What I'm going to attempt to do with this is again go between the strike plate that's mounted on the wall and the door into the bolt. In order to make this function, I need to actually go into the surface of the bolt, which luckily is made of fairly soft metal. So we're going to jam the ice pick into the bolt, then retract the bolt by pressure. And you can see, as we zoom in, or as we get on the bolt here, that the ice pick is actually sticking into the bolt. And that's all the pressure it takes to retract the spring of this bolt into the lock opening the door. A small but important milestone in the art of slipping locks was the development of variable thickness plastic wafers. These wafers are designed specifically to go between the door jam and the strike plate and slide back spring-loaded locks. They work better and they save wear and tear on your credit cards. This is a look at the Supermica in use. This stuff is flexible enough you can actually bend it to get around corners, do window latches, and it's pretty forgiving, comes back to its original shape pretty good. We're doing here, we're using a fairly thick piece, I'm going to go into this door latch and simply pop the latch back and open the door. Very effective stuff, better than credit cards, very handy. The smart open for combination padlocks, it hasn't changed in 10 years. There are a number of ways to open combination padlocks. The smart open, of course, is still to purchase a code book that gives the combination of all padlocks currently on the market and upcoming. You simply look up the combination by the serial number and open the lock.
A while back, I ran across an article in a California newspaper about a small town in California where the residents came home only to find virtually every garage door in the town wide open. The article went on to speculate about UFOs coming overhead and mysteriously opening garage doors. Within a week, I had found the two hackers that lived in the town that invented the first automatic garage door opener. This little clicker that can be purchased in many hardware stores is the heart of the garage door opener, but it still needs to be programmed correctly. The automatic garage door opener truly is a revolution in the art of opening buildings. This was the first unit that I found, made very crudely. You can see the wiring, no board, one generic clicker, but it will open most doors that have genie type opener and gates, I might add, in the US. Showertech revised this concept by taking two of the most popular RF clickers and incorporating that in their unit. They sell to law enforcement only. Garage door openers are not the answer to every problem. There are a number of different brands on the market, including Stanley, Black & Decker. Genie has six different models of their own. Each one uses a different frequency and a different code. Here we see Shomertech's unit in action. You'll notice it took a little while, but it did catch the code and opens the door. Here we see John walking down the street with a unit from Intelligence Incorporated in his pocket. This unit has three RF sections, so it actually catches more doors. You'll notice as he walks by, some of the doors open, including doors he may not want to open because the range can be greater than you anticipate. Something else to remember when you're using these units is that they will also shut doors if they're already open. This can be unfortunate if someone's in their garage working on their car and the door unexpectedly shuts on their head. Perhaps the most exotic entry tool ever invented was conceived by a gentleman I know. I was picking up some labels from my printer and he said, you know, I've got this friend that invented something that will pick any lock ever made. I tried to explain to the guy why this was impossible and he said, no, call my friend Bob and take a look at the mule tool. When I went to meet the inventor of the mule tool, Bob, I met him at a hotel where he was trying to sell the mule tool to the security officer of a major hotel chain. The guy said, look, I'm sorry, we can't demonstrate it because I locked my keys in my office and it's a steel door with a medical high security lock. Bob said, no problem. And 30 seconds later, we were inside the guy's office. I said, I'll take that tool. And the guy said, no, you won't. I was here first, I'll take it. The Mule Tool represents a breakthrough in the art of non-invasive lock opening. The Mule Tool actually consists of a number of tools that slip underneath the door and open it from the inside without harming the door or the lock itself. The standard sized Mule Tool, shown here, consists of several parts and will open most standard height locks including key in knob, deadbolt, hotel security bars, and so forth. The deluxe Mule Tool set consists of three Mule Tools in different lengths in order to access locks or deadbolts installed at non-standard heights. The first step to use the mule tool to open in knob locks is to measure where the knob is on the door so you can determine how to correctly position the tool after you slide it under the door. Next, slide the mule tool under the door. As you slide it underneath, rotate the handle to an upright position. In a second, We'll take a closer look at this maneuver. Slide the tool in, lay it down, and then rotate it to an upright position. Now holding the tool in the position where you know it will encounter the doorknob, slide the plastic tool underneath the door to grip the plastic strip, holding both the plastic and string in place. This step is not necessary with most wooden doors, but is quite essential with metal doors or doors that swing outward. At this point, bring the tool upright by pulling back with your right hand. You should actually bounce the tool against the inside of the door to make certain it is in the correct position to place the rubberized fabric over the interior doorknob. Then pull the string 
while sliding the tool toward the doorknob to position the fabric gripper over the knob. Next, move the mule tool back to the right, away from the doorknob, to wrap the fabric around the knob. At this point, simply pull the string and open the door. Let's take a look at the mule tool in operation from the inside of the room. In this instance, we're going to use the file folder to help slide the mule tool underneath the door. Once the file folder is in place, the tool is placed inside and pushed under the door. Once the tool is in position, remove the file folder and push the tool forward until you reach the previously determined position. Now bring the tool to the upright position and tap it against the door. At this point, you pull lightly on the string and move the tool so the fabric wraps around the doorknob. Again, this is done by moving the tool to the right and pulling lightly on the string to place the fabric securely on the doorknob. Then as you pull the string, the knob turns and the door opens. Like any other tool, the mule tool set requires a little practice, but as you can see, it will open most doors in a matter of seconds in the hands of a skilled operator. The same mule tool can be quickly modified in order to open single cylinder deadbolt latches. In order to prepare it for deadbolt work, remove the fabric and attach the single string using a slip knot as Bob's doing to the mule tool. Once the string is tied to the end of the mule tool, the tool is inserted under the door just as if opening a key in knob lock. It is then rotated up against the door and over to the lock itself. At this point, the string wraps around the deadbolt, placing you in a position to simply push up on the mule tool in order to unlock the deadbolt. In summary, to open deadbolt locks, you simply replace the fabric with a deadbolt string measure the distance to the deadbolt, slide the tool under the door and upward, then wrap the string around the deadbolt and pull to force the deadbolt open. Amazingly enough, it's also possible to lock a deadbolt behind you after leaving a room. This feature is popular with intelligence agencies and other investigative bodies who don't wish to leave notice of their passing. In order to relock, the tool is placed in contact with the deadbolt on the opposite side and the string is wrapped around it. The mule tool operator positions the string against the open door as shown. The door is then carefully closed. Then, simply pull the string to relock the deadbolt. The mule tool will then fall to the floor where it can be easily retrieved. Then, simply pull the string to relock the deadbolt. The mule tool will then fall to the floor where it can be easily retrieved. The mini mule tool can be used to remove security chains. Open the door as far as the chain will allow, insert the mule tool as shown, and snap it to the right. This bounces the chain out of the slot, freeing the door. Hotel style security bars can also be opened with a mini mule tool. Again, the door is opened slightly and the tool inserted as shown. The mini mule tool is put in the door and then moved to the right to remove hotel style security bars with no damage to the door. It's also possible to relock a security bar by employing the same tool in the manner shown. Once again, this effectively relocks the door with no evidence of original opening. The heavier mini mule tool can be utilized to remove in-floor ram guards by simply slipping the tool under the ram guard and lifting it as shown.
The mule tool is also designed to open exit bars, or as they are more commonly known, panic bars. It's tied to the deadbolt string approximately two to three inches below the mule tool itself. The mule tool is slipped underneath the door and forced upright until the hook grabs the bar itself. Simply step on the plastic and pull the string, forcing the bar down and allowing the door to open. The mule tool represents the most important breakthrough in lock opening technology in the past several decades. The standard size mule tool will open most in-knob lock cylinders, single cylinder deadbolts, security chains, hotel style security bars, ram guards, and panic bars. The style of the locking mechanism itself has little effect on the opening procedure. The mule tool will open high security locks such as Medico, push button locks, or most other locks that are designed to be difficult to pick open. A little more pedestrian, but no less exotic, are tools designed to open doors regardless of the type of locking mechanism employed. For instance, the first one we're going to look at is from England. It's called a TTLB tool. Lots of nice little pieces. Take out the main piece. You'll notice it has an adjustable swivel mirror on it. We have attachments that plug in to extend it. We have other attachments with devices on the end. Now think about this. What do you think this tool does? Let's take a look at what our first specialty toolkit does. Maybe some of you have already guessed. Any building, mail slot, this tool will access it. Simply consult the depth chart they give you or measure the door, put the correct extensions together, put the right tip on, which we're skipping for the moment, insert the tool in the mail slot to the bend, lift it up, adjust your mirror so you can see what's going on inside the door, and then you're in a position to manipulate the knob or lock. Let's take a look at the other side of the door and see exactly what the tool does. To use the mailbox tool, you put it in through the mail slot, then bring it up to the correct height to work on whatever lock you want to open. Of course, you have to use the correct tip. For instance, this wedge tip, let's see how it works on a Yale lock. The wedge simply comes up, pushes the lock open, and you're there. One of my favorite tips, yes it may look familiar, it's just about like the mule tool, comes up, loops over the knob, and opens the knob. As simple as that. Last but not least is this unique item. If the knob has a key in the lock, and after a bit of practice, you can use this to actually grab the key, pull it out, drop it on the floor. Hopefully on the floor you put a newspaper or a thin pan. You pull it back under the door and you have your keys to go around the front and open the knob. We're seeing more and more specialized opening tools come on the market. These three tools from Mark Bates Associates are not lock picks, yet they'll open a number of interesting locks. For instance, the first one, the snake pick, is a hard handle that holds a very stiff wire that's curved to reach inside and open a certain type of mortise lock, which we'll see in one second. The M175 is a shim tool that will open master 175 padlocks and presto padlocks like magic. The tool on the end, the IT1000, well, Let's just watch that in action. Here, the 175 chin tool is inserted into a master 175 padlock. You can see the insertion point is between the rotary wheels and the body of the lock itself. In order to open the lock, you depress the shackle and manipulate the tool until it pops the shackle. It's that easy. Let's try that again. We'll put it in. We'll spin the tumblers so you know it's locked. Depress the shackle. Manipulate the tool slightly. And that's how fast it opens Presto and Master 175 padlocks. Here are two typical locking mechanisms found in aluminum frame doors, such as those used in apartment buildings and storefronts. 
There are several ways to attack these locks. We'll look at the SWAT version first using a wonderful device known as a K-Tool. And then let's take a look at how fast the snake pick deals with these locks in a smart open situation. This device is called a K-Tool. It's also from Be Safe Industries. Comes in a nice little leather carrying pouch. Give you a couple of other things with it. A shove knife, opening spring latches, works real well. K-Tools have been used for years by the fire department. They have very sharp edges on them. Take any rim or mortise cylinder lock. The K-Tool can be shoved with its razor sharp edges over the lock. Then you take a hammer, you tap it onto the cylinder locks it on the cylinder. You take another tool, Halligan or our duck bill or a big crowbar, stick it in here, pry it out and it will rip the cylinder right out the door. This is an aluminum frame door, nice heavy cylinder. We haven't practiced this. We're going to try it. We're going to take the K tool, put it on, try and rip it out. Let's see what happens here. We want it on the cylinder, not on the guard ring. We're going to use our handy duck bill. See if I can tear it out. Right out of the door. This is a snake pick. It's made in Canada. It's a high tensile stainless steel wire designed to go inside the cylinder, catch the bottom of the rolling cam, and unlock the door. And we're going to do that now. This thing is really quick. So basically, what we do is we come in here and we grab the bottom of the cam, go all the way to the back. I'm touching the cam right now. You have to put quite a bit of pressure on it. There we go. And rotate the cylinder like so. Pull it out, open the door. This is the Adams Wright strike that you saw in the outside door. The snake tool is inserted in the cylinder. And a couple of points to understand is, is that it won't work on every lock or every cylinder. And the reason is, is there's got to be enough room for the tool to be inserted and go all the way to the back of the lock. In addition to that, if you don't have a cam that allows the snake tool to go all the way through, you can't get in. There is an alternative method to that. You can take a uh, drill bit with a cordless drill and drill in and make your own hole. The way this operates, first thing I'm going to do is show you how it works. I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull the latch back. So what's happening here is the stainless steel, uh, high tension stainless steel tool is re reaching the cam and pulling it back to the retracted position to open the door. Now, I'll show you what that looks like. Let me turn the lock around and you can see an interior view. of how it's operating. Let me lock it in place. And you can, as you can see, the tool grabs the latch and pulls it back. That is a spring latch. And that's how you unlock the door. Now we're going to take a look at the standard deadbolt mortise cylinder commonly seen in virtually every storefront lock. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to unscrew the mortise cylinder so you can get a clear, clear look of what we're doing. The first thing that you've got to realize is that there's a roller cam right here. As you can see, the pick's hitting it. In order to get this deadbolt to retract, I've got to push the, the roller cam down and rotate forward. That's what the snake pick does. So I come in and I push the roller cam down. By doing so, it releases the deadbolt. The reverse of that would be to pull it back. And then the bolt goes back up. So when you go in, so if this were straight, as you go in here, you come down and you hit the roller cam, push it down, and it causes the deadbolt to unlock. This unique lock is known as the Intel lock. It's a key optional locking system. That is, one can open it by inserting a key and turning or by simply turning the knob from side to side until the correct combination is reached. Once you reach that combination, you can open both the key and knob lock and the accompanying deadbolt lock. Let's see how to defeat the Intel lock system in just a few seconds.
The Intel lock employs a Schlage cylinder. This can be accessed by a small hole on the knob that actually will allow you to reach inside and touch the latching mechanism behind the Schlage cylinder. With the proper tool, and here we're using the tool we showed you before, or even with a small jeweler's screwdriver, it's possible to reach in and unlatch the lock. Now, of course, this works only on the bottom lock. It will not open the deadbolt. But if there's no deadbolt, you can see how the tool fits in there very nicely, reaches in, touches the lock. To unlock it, you simply grab it, move the tool until you catch the latch, pop the latch up, and open the lock. It's as simple as that. You can see by close-up examination of the IT-1000 that it's not a specific tool. That is, the same operation could probably be done with a little jeweler's screwdriver modified to fit the lock in question. There's also a number of new or revised techniques in the art of opening automobiles, and in some cases actually defeating the alarm systems. Let's take a look at a couple of new things. First of all, we'll look at the Master Z tool. Now the Master tool's been around for a while, but it's gotten better every year. This is the Master Z tool kit. It is composed of two or three tools and a wedge and a manual. The difference between this kit and most automobile opening kits is the number of tools needed to open almost every car available. The Master Z kit does this by allowing the user to change the configuration of the tool. In other words, to actually bend the tools by looking up the particular model of car or truck, following the bend chart, and then using the appropriate tool to open the door. We'll go out in the field and take a look at how well this thing works. One of the things I found before uh, trying to gain access in any vehicle is to make sure that the car is locked. Oh, looky here. If you need to gain access to a particular door, you just open that one up. Now to demonstrate, the, we're going to use the Japanese style tool here. With the Japanese tool, it, you want to try and wedge this piece under the window and then come back up to your door latch. Slide that under. Once you feel it go under the window, you want to pull this piece back out to give yourself a little bit of room on the inside weather strip. And just gently pull it back. There it comes. And slide it gently back up into position. Rotate in. Pull the door up, doors open. To remove the tool, gently pull it back down, rotate it around until you feel it come out on the other side of the window, and you're out. This is a view of the bend chart that the Master Z tool uses to accommodate itself to different cars. This manual is pretty, pretty knowledgeable, and each model has sometimes there'll be one or two different options as to which one you use. And this particular car, we're going to use the options on page four. Take the wedge here. I want to get it in right above the door lock where it says. Use the long end of this bar. I'm going to slide it down using a slight counterclockwise rotation until we feel it go past the window. There it goes. And then we're going to look for the rod. There's the rod. We've got it hooked on the rod. And there it goes. Just unlocked. And then see if we can do it, you can lock it also. We're going to do a Corvette here. Now on this one you look at the manual and it tells you to refer to bend chart A. We've done that. Put the bend in the rod. And we're going to just enter through the weather strip here. Come on in and head over for the door lock. Reach over for the door lock. We'll go around until you hit it. There it goes. And we're in. Another unique method for opening cars that use button type locks is to use a thin piece of plastic and a little bit of dental floss. Let's watch how this works. This lovely thing is known as a lemon pop or a scully strip. One would assume Mr. Scully invented it since there's no other reason for that name. Simply a piece of very flexible yet stiff plastic with some holes punched in it. You buy these for about five bucks, you get three of them along with some white cord as you see here. This little device works on any car that has a push button type lock. This includes a Porsche and a Mercedes. You simply push this in between the window and the body, push it down using the correct length of strip or cutting it yourself to fit, 
hook it over the button, as you can see our vice is doubling as a button here, pull the strings, tightening up on the button, and opening the lock. That would have popped the lock, opened the door up. There's no trace of its passing, five bucks, or you can make it yourself. Great idea. Again, we're gonna take a look at the Scully strip. Now remember, this is just a piece of plastic. You can see I have forced it in between the door and the frame of this lovely Mercedes we're going to borrow. And I've run the string material, can be dental floss or wax string, through the holes, made a loop, taped the loop, and hooked it over the doorknob. Now, I've, the glass obviously is down for our demonstration, but normally it would be here. Plastic's in there. I'm gonna grab a hold of the string and simply pull. You can see it tense up on the uh, door when this car goes by. See, it tents up on the door, and we just open the Mercedes. That's how easy it is. You can see the loop. Once again, loop it this way. You use a piece of tape, force it over, pull on the strings, and it opens. And that is how easy it is to take a Mercedes. You can see the strip itself, simply moderate stiffness plastic. Easily forced between this piece of rubber and the door jam down here. Very good for Porsches and Mercedes. One thing our car guy didn't show you, it's a very inexpensive device called a clear wedge system. This is from Prolock Tools. It consists of three things. It's a metal wedge and a couple of plastic reinforcing wedges. This does a real neat thing. Let's take a look here. Insert the wedge between the rubber seal and the window in the corner of the car. Move it a little bit until it's all the way in. And we take the rubber wedges, put them parallel and now we can press open and we get an unobstructed view of about a half inch wide into the lock of the car. This is just excellent. You can then put a probe light down here or just shine a flashlight down here and you'll see what the locking system is. This lets you choose the tool or use the tool correctly to open the car very, very simply. We've all seen those commercials. Every police chief in the world recommends a club. Well, most car thieves simply clip the steering wheel, although it's kind of a dead giveaway if you're stopped by the police. Let's take a look at how secure the club actually is. It's a double-sided wafer lock. There's one thing on the market designed specifically to open the club. We'll try that and we'll also look at our old friend the Cobra as well as a regular lock pick and see how well the club stands up. Well this is the world famous club. Guaranteed indestructible, unpickable, and the safest thing out there for your car. We're going to break that myth right now. Number one, this is a Prolock unit designed to defeat the club. It works on a standard uh, principle of a wafer lock that is picked from the top and from the bottom, meaning that there's pins in the top, i.e. wafers, as well as in the bottom. It's done with a raking motion and they suggest four times in the top and about four times in the bottom. So as you apply light pressure for tension on the, on the, on the cylinder plug, just go ahead and rake about four times on the top, about four times on the bottom. And a little wiggle doesn't hurt either. You're looking for the release point. There it is. That is the release point. And if you work it, you can take the pick back as far as it'll go and twist the club around. Hence, it's unlocked. Well, if you can't afford a Cobra and you haven't got a Pro Lock in it, then let's resort back to the lowly pick. So place your double-sided tension tool into the club and rake the wafers on both sides and there it goes. One unique item that's come on the market recently is similar to the automatic garage door opener. It's called the Alarm Dominator. Little black box has a generic clicker type circuit in it. When you activate the unit it simply sequences through all the possible codes. This unit will open most cars that use electronic lockers or defeat most cars that use electronic chirp type alarms. Simply turn it on and you wait for the chirp chirp to tell you the car is unlocked. You can see when you look inside it, basically circuit board, sequencer, and one small generic RF circuit. The basic skill of lock picking is still very important in covert and instant entry. Let's go over some of the latest and newest techniques and developments in this field, but first let's take a quick refresher course in why locks can be picked and how to pick them. 
You'll notice in our cutaway lock, we put the key in and the cuts in the key lift each individual tumbler to the shear line, allowing the inner cylinder to turn. This is the basis of how all pin tumblers and actually wafer tumbler locks work. This effort can be duplicated by using a number of other tools. The simplest way to attack a lock is to use the single pick. When we put the pick in the lock, we're trying to duplicate the action of the key exactly. Except you'll notice we're lifting each individual tumbler one at a time. As they get to the shear line, they will catch, or we hope they'll catch, especially when we apply a little tension. This duplicates the action of the key and allows the lock to open. A rake pick does the same thing, only much faster. Here, we rake in and out, moving the tumblers up and down rapidly, hoping they'll catch at the shear line. Rake picks are a good first shot because they'll open many locks instantly. Another option is to use the snap gun. The snap gun doesn't rake nor pick. What it does is actually bounces the lower pins against the upper or driver pins. As they bounce, the shear line is exposed momentarily. With a little tension on the lock, the lock will open as soon as the shear line is exposed. Snap guns are a great innovation and again will open many locks instantly. This drawing graphically illustrates how a good picking action lifts each tumbler individually. This is a standard Schlage cylinder that you would find in any industrial building. It is master keyed and as you can see it's been cut away to show you the pins. Now when I remove this key you'll notice the pins move up and down. This is the basis of how all locks work. In order to pick the lock you have to get to the shear line and if one pin drops from the cylinder um, into the from the top the top pin drops into the cylinder, then you, of course it locks up and vice versa. If a pin comes from the bottom and goes into the top, then it locks up. So in order to get it to open, we've got to have them all even, creating an even shear line. As we watch a real-time pick effort on our clear lock, bear a couple things in mind. Most locks want a certain pin to be picked first, not always the first pin in the lock. Start with the pin that picks the easiest, then move on to the second one, and so on. Also remember, if you lift any pin over the shear line, the lock will not open. You must stop, release tension, and start again. Listen for the clicks as each pin snaps into place above the shear line, and the lock will open. When you rake a lock, put the rake pick in, move it back and forth rapidly, and sometimes, you'll find the lock opens just that fast. High security locks are designed to be difficult or impossible to pick. Medico uses a bi-angled cut on each key, making it extremely difficult to pick, while Schlage Primus uses a sidebar to frustrate pick attacks. A couple of new tricks for picking locks have come to my attention. The first one is lubricate the lock. You can use WD-40 but we found a silicone-based lubricant such as TriFlow works even better. Simply shoot the TriFlow into the lock you're going to pick. This will help free up the pin action and allow the pins to move easier during the picking process. After lubricating the lock, it's necessary to test that all the pins are moving freely. There's no use wasting time on a lock that can't be picked because of foreign matter or sticky pins. To test the lock, insert your pick all the way to the back of the cylinder and lift all the pins above the shear line. Now very slowly withdraw the pick one pin at a time until you feel and hear each pin click into place. This ensures the lock can be picked. This is your typical uh, ACE cam lock. Um, something that's interesting to note, in the past we've had a number of different types of locks, meaning left, right, and center. 
this would normally have been a center lock if all the pins went completely around and ended up on both sides of this little indentation here. Then in the past we've had a left which would mean all the pins would come around except one would be missing here or a right all the pins would come around except one would be missing here. The newer cam locks <clears throat> that are out there will go right left or center automatically. You can see that there's uh, a indentation here, an indentation here, and an indentation here. And typically they change the hand with the cam. Um, there's probably still some older ones left out there, but uh, today pretty much this is what you're going to see. This is your typical tubular pick. You'll note the flat spring steel fingers that run the circumference of the pick. These correspond with the pins on the inside of the cylinder. One of the problems associated with this pick is underneath this little collar there are two o-rings. The o-rings apply tension to the, to the fingers of the pick and after a period of time they tend to wear down and when they loosen up then you don't get an accurate reading in the lock. To pick this lock you place the tubular pick into the cylinder and you rotate gently and I use the word gently and encourage that because if you place it in and, and rotate hard you'll crack the end of the pick. Simple rotation with light pressure back and forth will cause the picks to slide back to the shear line of the lock. And as we go and apply more pressure, you'll see that eventually the lock will pick, as illustrated here. We're rotating the cam back and forth. You notice I didn't have to use a lot of pressure to do that. We now have, in effect, a key for the lock. We can do one or two things. We can unlock the lock with it or we can decode this particular unit and make a key from the readings off of the pins. There's one new product on the market that's very interesting. Instead of the usual stamped out spring steel kind of picks, there's a pick set called the Fall Pick Set. These are imported from England. They're handmade stainless steel picks. Now, this is important in itself. I've seen people open high security locks picking with these picks. Also, the best thing in this whole set is their tension tool. This is magic. We gave this to several locksmiths to try out. In a minute, we'll show you what happened. Basically, these tension tools, unlike every other tension tool made, grab the cylinder from both the top and the bottom. What this does is expose the pins so you get no blockage from the tension tool, making it much easier to individually pick the pins or rake the lock. It also spreads the torque over the entire face of the cylinder. This allows the cylinder to turn freely. These things are wonderful. This is the best pick set I've ever used. Again, let's go to uh, one of my favorite locksmiths and see what he says about it. This is a set of fall picks. They're made in England. And from what I've seen of them, uh, as a matter of fact, what I've seen of them today, they're about the best picks I've seen on the market, period. Um, in my opinion, these would be a set of picks that you would probably keep for a lifetime. Um, they're made out of stainless steel versus the uh, conventional spring steel picks. Um, just incredibly well finished. Uh, there's no sharp edges. You're not going to end up with your hands being sliced up. But the best part about this, the very best, is this. This is an incredible tension tool. Now, of course, we all know the standard tension tool looks like this, which is the bent metal. And while it's, you know, been around for since the beginning of time on picking locks, the problem is, is that it gets in the way of the pick many, many times. This tension tool is incredible. It's about the best one that I've seen. It is the best one that I've seen anywhere. First of all, as I mentioned before, it's adjustable. And it, when it's inserted in the lock, uh, like so, you leave all this area for picking. There's nothing in the way, and it fits snugly from the top to the bottom. That's incredible. There's nothing else out there that comes close to this. Uh, I can't say enough about this particular product, and as you can see, the two little fingers right there. In the kit, they also give you um, two blanks that you can, and they have not been shaped or formed. You can make them fit any lock or any particular series of locks that you want, so you do have the custom ability with them. Now we're going to pick a standard pin tumbler cylinder. Again, utilizing the um, English tension tool, which is out of this world because it fits in the lock just perfectly. We're going to use the rake, um, which is their version of our rake, 
It's a little different. I've never seen anything quite like it, um, but it works great from what I've tried so far. So just insert it in the lock, light pressure with a tension tool and movement, moving the pins back and forth. And I pick a little differently than most people do. I simulate the electronic pick. When I invented the pick, I used the same motion that I used in picking in the lock pick, and that's how the electronic pick came about. And there we go, it's released. As you can see, the cylinder turns. Now let's try the same tension tool, but let's use the Cobra electronic pick to do it. Um, that should be real fast. You place the pick in, go to the back of the lock where it bottoms out, and just hit it a couple of times. There it is, it's picked. A little faster than hand picking. Here's a sample of a number of electronic lock picks that are on the market today. One of the newest introductions is the mini pick. It uses two C cells. Its big brother, the bigger pick, uses three C cells and has a little more power to it. This one is made by a large lock company. It's actually a converted screwdriver from Taiwan. It does work, but the machine work and the workmanship's all plastic and not very well made. This is the Cobra Electronic Lockpick. It's been around for about 15 years. Um, in my opinion, it's the best on the market. It was designed to do one thing, be an electronic pick. It's got a replaceable and removable battery pack, and that is known as the Cobra 3 Electronic Lockpick. Its new big brother is called the Cobra Pro. It's a little longer than the old version, but it has something new has a removable battery pack that has about twice the power and it comes with a charger assembly which will charge two batteries at one time. You can get approximately two hours use out of each battery and that's constant use. It also has in the front end of it a light to illuminate the keyway which is very important if you're in a hallway or as a locksmith you're at nighttime trying to uh, pick a lock on a car that type of thing. It's also got some other interesting features. For one thing, it has really good torque, and that's controllable torque, meaning that you can reduce it down to the same kinetic energy that you would find at the highest setting, in other words, where it's just going at full speed. But if you have a small keyway, like a padlock keyway, you can reduce that, get the same amount of kinetic energy with just a slight movement of the pick. This is the adjustment for the Cobra Electronic Pick. You take the tension tool and you rotate it and unlock the side locker and then you go to the bottom of the unit right here, insert the tension tool and you can control the amount of tension or striking force. If I've got it open all the way, that's what it would look like. There's a tremendous amount of striking force there. But as I rotate this, I remove the pressure from the cam, we get less power. This is what it would sound like. That's still quite a bit of force, so we'll take it up a little bit more. This will be totally off. Barely touching it all. Come down a little further. That's where we want it. Come back over here and lock it in place. Now it's locked. The important thing to note with the Cobra is that whether you have it locked in, in completely open position with absolutely uh, a tremendous amount of striking force or whether you've decided to pick a small keyway padlock or a high security padlock, you can get the same amount of striking force from totally open to totally closed. And that's very important because if you don't have that kind of control, you can't pick the locks. This is the new tri-axis pick. It is said to be much quieter than the Cobra or any other lock and I'll demonstrate that. Sounds like a very, very precision sewing machine motor as it goes back and forth. It uses a separate 9 volt battery container so that you can stick that in your pocket and pick the locks. That's the movement back and forth, very much like an electric carving knife. We're going to try this later on one of the doors. It's said to open all types of locks, including Medico and other high security locks, in just seconds, as well as pin tumbler locks. It's, uh, if it works, it's uh, quite an engineering feat. This is the new tri-axis pick. 
It comes with its own battery pack, which carries a 9-volt battery and is separate from the unit. It is The manufacturer claims that it will open all types of pin tumbler as well as high security locks, such as uh, Medeco and other high security locks. We've never tried this. This is our first time today, but we're going to try it on a standard Schlage cylinder and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and insert the pick in the lock, like so, and I'm hit the button. And nothing happens. Um, in order to pick this lock, and this, this unit goes back and forth, as you can see, like so. In order to pick the lock, you have to have movement of the pins. The top and the bottom pins have to move to the shear line. Unfortunately, when I insert this in the lock and turn it on, it does absolutely nothing except go back and forth. There is absolutely no movement of the pins. Hence, there's no way in the world to pick the lock. A um, little disappointed, to say the least. This is a $500 pick, which would be great for carving turkeys, I'm afraid, but that's about it. We're going to go ahead and pick a standard Schlage cylinder. We're going to use the Cobra to do it. And I'm using the uh, fall tension tool, which is excellent for use with electronic pick. And there it picks. We're going to use the Cobra Pro to pick the quick set uh, knob block as demonstrated here. And of course we're going to use the the new tension tool that we described earlier which is fabulous for electronic picks. Place the pick in, bottom it out at the back of the lock. Make sure that you've got free movement. If you don't have free movement you're not going to pick the lock. Just hit the button and the lock picks. It's important to note with this new style tension tool that it requires less pressure than a normal tension tool and getting used to that takes a few locks uh, under your belt to understand that it, it, because of its size it takes less pressure. Let's take a last look at the electronic or electric lock pick. I think, as do the other locksmiths that consulted on this tape, the Cobra, in this case the Cobra Pro, with its lit keyway, thin needle, very high torque motor, high power rechargeable battery packs, and general shape is by far the best type of this pick. It's a little expensive, but if you're a pro, you really need one of these. Secondly, I like the picks from Southern Ordnance, also sold by Intelligence Incorporated. The E100, or mini pick, contains two C cells and a small motor. You can tell by the sound that it doesn't have nearly the torque of the Cobra. We found this will open low tolerance wafer locks, easy pin tumbler locks pretty well. We also discovered that it has more power if you use it upside down. If you get this pick, try it both ways. This is under $100 and for that it's a bargain. It's the only pick we've tested under $100 except for our little paper scissors of course. Secondly, is the 300, also from the same people. This has three C-cells and a much larger motor. Let's take a look at the E300 on a Baldwin lock. Now they tout Baldwins as being, quote, high security. From a consumer standpoint, I guess they're a little higher than quick sets. I think they use chisel pins. They're certainly not a Medico or a Primus. E300 is used just like the Cobra. Put it in the lock, got it in too far, you hear it hit the back. Pull it out, light tension, back off, light tension again. And that's it. Hey, 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 Kev, go sit someplace. Okay, sit. Sit. Sit! Down. Kevlar! Right there! Down! Come on, down! Hurry up! All the way down! Down! Stay quiet. Ready? One thing our car guy didn't show you. Uh, 
don't you start? You want to walk in and then I'll come in? Yeah. This is a snake table. It's made in Canada and it's designed. Uh, 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 made in England. It says Canada. Oh, does it? Sorry. They told me England, alright. Back off.